said you were expected, you were to go right up. Just what I'm going to do, Oscar. Right. Margo! Oh my God, Margo. I need an ambulance right away. 123 River Shore Drive. Dorn, D-O-R-N, Margot Dorn, it's in the penthouse. She's in very bad shape, she has a head injury. I don't know if she's dead or alive, it looks like murder. Scott, Draper Scott. Yeah, I'll be here, and hurry.
the guilty party is free. Probably keeping close track of this trial, taking himself very clever to have gotten away and very lucky that Mr. Scott arrived moments after that deed was done. Now, I can assure you that when that person is taken into custody, it will be someone with less moral character than Draper Scott. The man seated at this table has dedicated the better part of his life to the study and practice of the law. He has lived his life in a manner which has proved his deep respect and love for the law. The basic tenets of right and wrong are so ingrained in Draper Scott, it is incomprehensible that he would choose to disregard them, no matter how extreme the provocation. Understand, I am not just extolling the virtues of a client. Unlike Mr. Nelson, whose uh, insights into the defendant's character are based on pure conjecture, my observations come from a close personal friendship that has lasted many years. I felt so strongly about his ability and his integrity that I brought him into my law firm. It was one of the wisest moves I ever made. The prosecution has called this a crime committed in anger. I'm well aware that psychiatrists contend that the capability of violence exists in each and every one of us. But to assume that a man with the gentle nature of Draper Scott, a man who has never shown the slightest inclination toward physical force, would be capable of such a crime is truly asking us to stretch our imaginations. Mr. Scott readily admits that he was angry when he went to visit his mother-in-law, that he wanted to have it out with her because of the deceitful trick she had played. But his weapons for that confrontation were going to be words. He was going to vent his hostility in a perfectly civilized and legal manner. I can believe, given the circumstances, that Draper might have raised his voice. But to raise a poker and brutally beat her to death, never! Draper's love of the law isn't the only rationale I give you to prove his inability to commit this crime. He has another love, one far more tangible, his wife, April. He loves her with all his heart. She means more to life than life itself. At this very moment, April is in the hospital, about to give birth to their first child. Margot Dorn was April's mother. To think for one minute that Draper Scott could be responsible for inflicting such anguish and grief upon the woman he loved is beyond belief. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I am convinced of Draper's innocence. All you must believe is that a reasonable doubt exists. And I can't imagine any member of this jury, after hearing Draper's testimony, his denial under oath that he had any involvement whatsoever in this crime, would not also be convinced of his sincerity and his innocence. That being the case, I am sure you will return from your deliberations with a verdict of not guilty.
the department is out right now. I'm going to go back this evening and talk to you. Oh, about what? Well, I told you these three haven't given up on this case yet, didn't I? No. They've got a new pet theory. So I'd like to check it out. And we were very grateful about it, too, Chief. We know that you're not crazy about the idea. No, I'm not crazy about the idea of my three best detectives spending all their time on a closed case. Logan, we're checking on no mess. You told me she had an airtight alibi. Well, she did, because I gave it. He thought he saw no Madison outside my apartment building the night Margot was killed yeah. at the same time. Yes, yeah, only now we're not so sure. It certainly may have just been a reasonable substitute. So you know what the games are called, Madison. Is that playing got you? Oh, it's the masquerade. Masquerade party. Mm -hmm. Seems like she fooled me without even trying. I thought I saw no Madison dressed up as Martha Corey, but now we suspect it might have been somebody else. Well, who? An elderly lady selling newspapers on the corner. That is what we believe. You see, Mrs. Madison models her mansion of the damned which after this old lady who sells papers. And the only trouble is that she's vanished, she disappeared. Seems like she's inherited a lot of money from a rich aunt and now owns the way to fight. So there's no way that you can confirm whether it was Nola Madison who saw or this, this other woman. Hmm, now isn't that convenient that she should disappear just when we want to talk to Yes. Well? I mean, what do you think about this? Are they onto something or not? Mm -hmm. Nola Madison had the same motive that Elliot Thorne had. But we haven't proved that yet. Maybe, maybe. Maybe the shortcut. This empty hat box? Uh, empty wick, wick box, Chief. Chief. Is that correct? Listen, Nola Madison is also known as Nola Patterson, the actress. And a damn good actress. Remember, Deborah already, had already met her and she convinced her that she was a completely different person. That's right. She's already proven to us that she can already be more than one person. I know I was excited when they were here this morning, but I thought about it and I realized that they only did that to try to make me feel I don't think that's it at all. I think they genuinely feel they believe in this case. Well, then they think they're trying to make themselves feel better. Maybe relieve their guilt for having put Draco where he is. Thanks a lot. I'll let you know what's going on. Bye. 